Hi, welcome to another episode of Paul Don Power, PSD TV's talk show on engineering and power electronics design. I'm here with Tom Ribrich from uh, Navitas. They're a uh, relative newcomer to the industry, and but they've got something really, really radical. They have come out with the first gallium nitride power IC. That is an incredibly significant thing. Can you tell me why, Tom? Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you very much. Glad to be here. The pleasure's mine. All right, mine too. Mine too. <laughs> so yeah, so we're saying so. Gallium nitride power I see. That's really, really enticing. I mean, that's that's a. It also sounds difficult. Yes, yes. Uh, we've actually integrated the uh, gate drive directly on the same I C as the power device. Um, any controlling logic or anything that is just the driver and the uh, device? Uh, just the driver at the moment, um, and but that already in itself is very challenging. Um, so we're very proud of this uh, achievement for our first products. So it's basically now GAN without worrying about how to drive it because the driver is incorporated directly on the die. Exactly. Uh, Dan Kinzer talked about this a lot today in his keynote speech. Uh, and just to emphasize that again, by taking the difficulties of the gate drive out and merging it directly with the power device, in the sense you're merging signal with power, now this takes the difficulty out of these designs, lets us go up with the frequency, and uh, you can basically drop these products down like building blocks, Lego blocks almost, around your board and just run simple PWM signals to each of the blocks, worry-free. That's sweet. That's really sweet. Now, what about um, the technical difficulties? Was it an expensive op proposition or was it more technically difficult? How much of the die is used up for the driver space? Is it cost-effective? Uh, yeah, very cost-effective. Um, if you were to see one of the layouts of our actual devices, uh, looking at it from 30,000 feet, you wouldn't even see the gate driver circuitry on board. It would look like one large power device. So the power device does take up majority of the area. So basically, the adding the gate driver is more of a technical achievement than it is a uh, layout or a topology achievement. Exactly. Got it, got it. Well, actually, the, uh, the British government is investigating using piezoelectric uh, materials for next generation computing devices for that same reason, switching speed, increasing. Yeah. So I could easily see the entire device one day, in for certain applications, of course, being completely made out of gallium nitride. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, basically, again, you want to merge the, the signal with the power. So you take all these uh, difficulties out, so then you're free to, to increase the speed. Very, very sweet. Now, I see you've got a couple of little boards here in your hand. Yes. Let's talk a little about, let's look at this blue one here with the rings in it. What, 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 let's, let's talk about it here. Yeah, this is a Phi 2 converter. And what these rings are actually are they're little novel little air cores that have been built directly into the PCB. There so no magnetics at all in this. That's right. This is, uh, these are almost stitched, stitched in through the layers of the PCB as you go around in a toroid shape. Very innovative PCB design. But this lets you then push the frequencies up to the 2030 megahertz range where you do not need ferrites anymore at all. Now, um, okay, then what about EMI? Uh, EMI is also, many people have questioned about EMI, but uh, actually going up in, the, in frequency brings the EMI magnetics and the EMI filtering down as well. Got it, got it. So it's, it's almost a mutually solving situation. That's correct. That's correct. Great, great. Now, um, what about this other board here? Yeah, this is a nifty little uh, boost, uh, boost PFC board. 150 watt. Uh, we've taken the frequency, operating frequency of this board up probably about five times higher than what uh, the, the conventional power factor controllers are doing today. So today if they're running at around 50 kilohertz at full load, uh, this one's running up at 250 kilohertz. And then as you go up in line and you go down in load power, this thing can run as high as one megahertz. Um, so where are your devices on this? Ah, okay, great question. So if we turn the board over, uh, you can see here, if the camera can zoom in, here is the Power Factor Controller IC. This is a simple low voltage analog control IC. And you can see we just drive the PWM signal. We route it over to our Navitas chip right there. That's a little 5x6 uh, QFN package, surface mount package there. Um, and this does the, uh, this is basically the primary boost switch, which is doing the uh, boosting the AC voltage up to a uh, rectified DC and also maintaining power factor correction at the, at the input. Very nice. Now, um, one of the issues with uh, gallium nitride and other wide band gap semiconductors have been the packaging itself. You're having no problems at all with the QFN package with this? No, that's, act that's also uh, new to the industry. We've actually been able to uh, mount this down on a simple lead frame uh, with wire bonds, but very, very uh, uh, wire bonds are very limited in length so that the inductance doesn't come into 
uh, play very much. And again, because the gate drive is merged directly to the gate of the power device on the IC, there is virtually zero uh, inductance at the gate. Very nice. So, hey, let's hook this up and see what it does. Okay, let me hook it up and uh, we'll, we'll get right back to you. Excellent. All right. So we're back. So, Tom, I see you've hooked it up now, and so uh, tell us what you did and uh, show us what you're going to show us. Sure, I'd love to. All right, come on over here to the board here. And here I've flipped the board over, and I've hooked one scope probe up between ground and the drain of the Navitas uh, single iDrive uh, device. So what we're going to do on the oscilloscope is we're going to take a look at that drain voltage as the PFC controller turns on and off every switching cycle. So here on the scope, we can actually see, uh, we see multiple edges at the turnoff. That's because the frequency is free running. Now this is a boundary mode uh, controller, which means as the AC line goes up and down at the input, the frequency is free running and will change from a minimum value at the peak of the line to a higher value near the zero crossings of the line. So I'll pause it here at different points along the line. You can get an idea of what we're talking about. Now that's somewhere near the zero crossings. So we see a very short uh, we see a, a very long, longer off time. Here we see a longer on time, which means we need, need to charge more current into our inductor uh, to produce more power to the load. So here at the peak of the line, we're running at about 250 kilohertz. And when we get down near the zero crossings, if I can capture one, we're closer to 300 kilohertz. Now this is at low line. This is low line, 120 volts input. We have a power factor of 1.000 very impressive. That's also the GAN technology enabling uh, such a high power factor with low distortion. And the higher frequencies will come up if we were to go up to high line 220 volts input. That's where we would see this thing switching at a megahertz. Excellent. So now, um, where can I get that board? Uh, right. You can contact our sales, uh, Steve Oliver. Uh, he is uh, soliciting demo board orders at the moment for select customers. Uh, obviously, that depends on how many you want to purchase long term. And if you place a big enough order with us, then, then we can get you all the demo boards you need. There you go. And what's the website? Uh, that is uh, navitassemi.com. Uh, Excellent. Now, um, is there anything else you wanted to leave our audience with about these devices before we close the episode out? Um, I just would point out, if you do look at these waveforms one more time, uh, again, you can see very clean edges. I see no overshoot when I turn off. And you see that's a ZVS edge on the way down, coming nice and clean down to zero. I mean, I feel like I'm looking at waveforms that I saw out of a textbook back, uh, you know, 20 years ago when I was in college. So I, I can't believe my eyes either. So why don't you summarize the primary benefits then for our audience right now? Okay. So... Uh, uh, primary feature is that these blocks are very easy to use. You can drop these things down like jelly beans on your circuit, hook them up, and they'll pretty much function straight away. We'll get you up to higher frequencies without any headaches, nice clean switching edges. You can then drop the magnetics of your design. You can drop the EMI filter size down, and you can then uh, increase the overall power density of your power converter. That's quite impressive. That is real. I mean, well, that's what everybody's trying to achieve, right? That's right. That's right. We're just going to help you do it easier. Um, can you give us a ballpark pricing, or is it something that you're going to announce later? Uh, I think we'll announce that later. And again, it'll depend on uh, quantities, and uh, uh, you know, depends if we like you or not. <laughs> well, let's hope you like us. Okay. <laughs> so, okay, Tom. Great. Tom, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. All right, you bet. Thanks for thanks for uh, for uh, uh, listening to our uh, great product today. Well, I'm very impressed with it, and I also want to thank our audience for taking the time to be with us. We wouldn't be here without you. Tell your friends. This is Alex Palt for PSD TV's Palt on Power. Have a great day.